Jesus says, your treasure, it's part of you, your heart. So in other words, things that, that, that I'm willing, in other words, if I'm going to give something or buy something, when you go and buy something, you look at that and you evaluate, am I prepared to give up some of me for that? And you measure it in your mind and you're happy with the exchange because it will enhance your life more than this in my bank. Hello again, dear friend, and welcome back. My name is Alan Bagg, and this is our Wisdom for Life broadcast. Today, we're going to carry on with our series, Being Rich Toward God. What does it mean to be rich toward God? What are the things that we need to be aware of if we want to be rich toward God? Jesus told us the parable of a man who landed up being called a fool because he was trying to hold on to too much. I want to change my heart. I want to be the man that's rich toward God. What does that mean? How do we put that into practice? We're having a look at that. Enjoy. I'll see you later. When, you, when you're doing work, when you give yourself, when you go to a company and say, I want to come and have a job, what they're doing is they're going to say, okay, I want eight hours of your day. I want everything you know. Come and apply it here. All your education that you paid for, sweated with, you know, struggle and battle through exams. I want that. That's what I'm, I want you to come and apply here. So when you wake up in the morning, you are exchanging. In other words, today, I would rather spend time with my family, but I'm taking, that's my life, and I'm taking it and I'm giving it to someone else. It's my life. It's my effort. It's me. I'm giving you me. And at the end of the month, they give me something back. I've exchanged me for this. So the salary that you've earned is a representation of you. That's me. That's my life. If I'm holding my salary in my hand, that's my, that, is, that is 30 days of my life that I gave to someone else. And you want some of it? That's like asking me to cut off my finger. Are you with me? And so that's why we become, it's not the rands and cents. It's not the paper. It comes off a tree with ink on that came from some pigment somewhere. Are you with me? It's, it's paint mixed and put on paper. There's no value in that. The value is in, it's an exchange medium for your life. That's what makes it sensitive. So when I say, give me some of your money, that's part of you. That's why Jesus says, your treasure, it's part of you, your heart. So in other words, things that, that, that I'm willing, in other words, if I'm going to give something or buy something, when you go and buy something, you look at that and you evaluate, am I prepared to give up some of me for that? And you measure it in your mind and you're happy with the exchange. In other words, you prepare to buy that article, that, that piece of furniture, that piece of equipment, whatever, because it will enhance your life more than this in my bank. So your life has increased. It's improved. So you're willing to part with the money because what you get in exchange in your mind, you've evaluated as increasing your life. Can you see that? So that's why I will only exchange money for something that I estimate will increase my life. So when somebody gets into an environment and says you need to give, in an instant we, based on our knowledge and understanding, will evaluate either I'm going to increase or that person's trying to diminish me. <laughs> and if my evaluation is they're trying to diminish me, I'll hold on to it. I'll say, no. If I, if I part with this, I'm left less. 
Now you're beginning to understand why some people sit in an offering message and some get excited and others get offended. Because the one getting offended still sees it as taking from their life, yet the one getting excited sitting right next to him hearing the same message gets excited because he sees the value in it. He's about to increase. Now it makes sense, doesn't it? Now, people are, why do people get upset? Now you know why. It's very easy to under, once you understand it. So Jesus say, yeah, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Your heart is revealed by what you're willing to impart finances into. So he comes down to verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, I explained this last time that mammon is the monetary system created by man through demonic influence. Are you with me? The, the demonic control of money. Money is not evil. It's the control of it. So mammon works through money, creating in man a desire for it. And if the decision can be made based on money, then that becomes the God. That's why the Bible says the borrower is servant to the lender. Because if God spoke to me to give my car, yet in my mind I evaluated that's too expensive, I can't afford to do that, I still owe money on it, whatever, therefore I say, no, I can't do that, then mammon spoke louder than God. Now I'm serving mammon. The one I say yes to is the one I'm serving. Can you see that? That's why it's important that we control mammon's that we make sure that we got mammon under control. We take dominion over mammon. Mammon doesn't make the decisions for me. I make the decisions based on God's leading. I'm a stewardship of God. Say that. I renounce mammon. I refuse mammon to make my decisions for me. I only make decisions led by God. Money will never make my decision. God makes my decisions. He leads me. I'm a son of God, led by the Spirit of God. And as He leads me, I make wise decisions. Whatever He tells me to do with money, He will make sure it succeeds. Amen. So I control, I prove if I'm faithful over mummy, over mammon, money, is if... I hear an instruction from God, and I obey it. That means I have control over it. Does that make sense? Amen. So he goes on to verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Now did Jesus say, listen guys, I just want to give you a recommendation, a suggestion. You really don't have to worry. Is that what he said? Or did he give an instruction? Do not sounds like an instruction to me. Isn't it? So if Jesus says, do not worry, I must make a decision that worry is no longer part of my life. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap. They don't, they don't gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you of not more value than them? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, one foot to his height. If you really worried about being short, do you think you can worry yourself taller? That's what he's saying here. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed or dressed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow it's thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knows you need these things. God knows you need a place to stay. God, can't you see I'm in trouble? Yeah. He's waiting for us to step over into a place of being rich toward Him. 
Are you with me? Worrying doesn't change your life. How many of you have ever been through a serious situation that really caused worry in your life? I remember I used to, when Janine and I were, what do I call, supernaturally in debt. We were so much in debt, there was no natural way out of it. And I remember sitting down with accounts and working out how much I owed and how many people I had to pay. And, and I tell you, I used to sit over that thing and I would try and figure out left, right, cent. If I paid this one here, then I could pay that one next month and this one. And sometimes I had to sit through all night trying to figure out how I, I worried, 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 worried. You know, it's like I've said before. If you go through a filing cabinet and you're looking for a piece of paper... Has this ever happened? Yeah. Where you're looking, you know the paper's in you. You know it's in you. You know it's in you. And you go paper by paper to right to the back, and you didn't find it. But I, I, I'm sure it's in you. So then you start from the back. You go front ways. <laughs> look, still not there. So now you take everything out. You look through each paper one by one. It's not that one. It's not that one. And you go through one by one. And when you get to the end, it's still not there. Have you ever flipped that over and done it again? Because <laughs> you're so convinced it's in there. Hey, by the third time, the paper's not there. Are you with me? Somewhere along the line, you've got to realize it's not there. And when you're sitting up all night trying to solve a problem, thinking if I, if I, you know what I found out? That if you take a set of numbers and you add them from top to bottom, they're exactly the same as if you add them from bottom to top. <laughs> I tried every little math trick I could think of to try and figure out how to pay people. And I, and I went through nights like that, worrying, working up ulcers and sweating. And you know what? I woke up the next morning and I still owed exactly what I owed. Not once did I ever, someone phone me, say, listen, we just got this idea that you're worrying, so we're canceling the account. <laughs> no one's ever done that. You, I've never worried myself rich. <laughs> How do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So if worry doesn't solve it, Stop worrying. Yes. Say that. If worry doesn't stop it, worry stop, it. Worrying. stop worrying. Stop worrying. Amen. Amen. That's easy to say and do. Well, how do I stop worrying? Jesus gives you the answer. Look at the verse 33. But seek, 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 what? Loud, first, first. What's first mean? Not second, not last, not as a last resort. This is your first thought. This is your first attitude. This is your first goal. This is your first decision. Seek first the kingdom of God. Be rich toward God first. Everything I do, whenever I do anything, God first. Amen. If I get something, God, what's your part? Amen. If I'm about to do something, how's this going to affect you, God? If I'm going to make a decision, what are you saying, God? Amen. Someone gives me an idea, says, try this. God, what do you think? Amen. Not how do I feel. Got this wonderful deal. If you move from here to here, your salary will 10 times. Hang on, what does God say? My flesh is going, yes, been believing for increase. But it could be the enemy taking you out of the region into another place where there's no church and so that he can get you out of this word. And he'll dangle any kind of money in front of you that he knows he can get you running just to get you out the word. And family, I don't care if they... Got, they there is no one on this planet. I don't care if the richest man on this planet came and offered me a hundred times, a thousand times what I'm earning now. If you just come and sit in my house and be my personal mentor. No. You can't buy it. You can't buy this. What does God say? Seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, His way of doing things, the right way. And what will happen? All the things. What things? The things the Gentiles are worrying about. The things that have been bothering and hurting and, and, and plaguing your mind. All those things will be added. Now, I need to ask you a question. 
Because I want to know who I'm talking to tonight. Do you accept this Bible as truth? The scripture that says here that when you hear the good news, that Jesus died for you, gave his life for you, paid the price you should have paid, and then rose from the dead. And today he's ascended on high, seated at the right hand of the Father. That if you believe that, and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. In other words, up to that point, you would have died and gone to hell for eternity. But now you are so confident in those words that you've taken Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you prepare to bank your eternity on that scripture. Yes. And you really don't care if you die. Because you know you settled for eternity. Amen. How many of you have placed your whole eternity on that scripture? And if you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. Let me see your hand. You believe that? Yes. You really believe that? Yes. You're staking your entire eternity on that scripture. Yes. Same Bible. Same Jesus. Yes. Just as read as every other time he spoke. That if you make his kingdom your priority, the things will be added. Amen. Without worrying. Oh, I don't think it hit home because I just heard a few. Ooh, you, mm, uh. if, did you get what I just said? How many of you are excited about going to heaven for eternity? You excited about going to heaven for eternity? Yeah? Same words. If you make the kingdom of God your priority, first in every decision, you make you rich toward God. That same scripture says, all the other things will be added to you. You don't have to chase them. You don't have to pursue them. You don't have to try and get them. You don't have to worry about them. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. All the things you've been worrying about will be added to you. How many you believe that? then you never have to worry again. Now, you know the enemy comes to tempt you to sin. How many of you saved? How many of you sinned since you got saved? If you didn't put your hand up, you can add that to the list. <laughs> because we all have. Isn't that right? But do we fall over and say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I lost my, I lost my, I lost my salvation. I'm going to hell. Is that what we do? No. What do we do? We immediately turn. We say, God, that was a sin. That's wrong. 1 John 1, 9. We confess we sin. What happens? He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Isn't that right? Are you still going to heaven? Even though you messed up. All right. So the next time worry comes, because it's going to challenge you. Open a letter. <gasps> Worry. What must you do? Same thing. Same thing. Jesus says, why do you worry saying? A King James Version says, take no thought saying. So even though the thought comes, don't say it. You may feel it. You may sense that you're wanting to worry. Uh, say, no, 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 no. I know where this is coming from. This is mammon trying to take my life. And I refuse mammon to take my life. Father, your kingdom is far more important to me. I'm choosing first your kingdom, and I'm going to make a decision that I'm not going to panic. I'm choosing not to worry. And I tell you, I've dealt with the devil. He's tried to come out against me. Yeah, but what if? You want to challenge me over a 500 rand bill? Or, I remember when we eventually paid everything off, we were out of debt. And then another letter arrived. You owe this amount of money. And it was like something like 500 rand. But they went and knocked on 3,000 rand of lawyer's fees and 1,000 rand finder's fees. And before you know it, I had all this money that I owed. Oh, give me a break. We, we out of debt. What's this nonsense? And, of course, the worry came up. I said, no, that's it. You want to make me worry? Exactly what is asked for in this letter, I am giving that to the kingdom of God. I took that entire amount. I wrote a check out. That's going on Sunday. And I said, now that that's settled, phone the lawyer. 
I said, what's going on here? Who are you talking about? Where's this come from? And they said, oh, no, sorry, sir. That was an old record. We shouldn't have sent it to you. You, you got nothing. You don't owe anybody here. Come on, give Jesus praise. So I didn't owe anybody. It was an administration error. But if I'd worried, it would have been for nothing. Are you with me? Well, what did I do? I nailed mammon. I turned it into a seed, and God turned that thing around. And I haven't been back again. The Christmas season is upon us, and with it comes the opportunity to love on those very dear to us. It's a special time of the year that we can draw near to God and with our family and friends reflect on the reason for this Christmas season. The Bay Christian Family Church will be getting together on Christmas Eve to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus. We encourage you to join us for this special time with family as we glorify Jesus through song and dance. For any information regarding the locations of the Bay Christian Family Church or their service times, please visit our website at allenbagministries.org. The new year is almost upon us and with it brings a promise from God for the year ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Join us at the Bay Christian Family Church as we see in the new year and receive a prophetic word from Apostle Alan Bagg about what the Lord has in mind for us in this year ahead. Receive it tonight! It's yours! Take it! Come on, give Jesus praise! Happy New Year! The service starts at 10 p.m. on the 31st of December, but we encourage you to get here early to ensure your seat. If you would like any more info, please contact Alan Bagg Ministries at any of these details. Tell me, how do you recognize that we are stewards over God's kingdom? From the beginning of mankind, we were given the privilege of looking after God's kingdom. Although man lost that authority, Jesus got it back and once again put us in charge. I want to walk in it without being trapped in covetousness. And that tell Jesus telling us the key is to be rich toward God. In this series, you'll discover how to be rich toward God. Because if my heart attitude towards wealth is wrong, then I'm not rich towards God. You will learn how to develop a healthy attitude toward wealth. When I'm rich towards God, I'll have a healthy attitude towards finances. You'll understand that God's desire for you is to increase in wealth. God's not against you having wealth. In fact, He encourages you to increase it. But He is very serious about our relationship towards wealth. Get this series and discover how to become rich toward God. You will see Jesus honoring your life with abundance because He has a purpose for it. Contact us at these details or visit us online. This is such an important message because we don't want to be trapped in the concept of being covetous. In fact, where Jesus even called the person a fool, the Word of God says that the prosperity of a fool will ruin him. And the way I make sure that that doesn't happen is by being rich toward God. I really want to encourage you to get a hold of the series. It's available on DVDs, on CDs, and on MP3s. You let us know. But make sure you get your set today so that you can listen to it again and again and again and develop your faith in that area. And so make sure you get it as soon as possible. Today I want to talk to the person that's watching right now. And you may be wondering if you're right with God or not. You're wondering if you're even born again, if you're a child of God. Somehow you came to this program, somehow you flipped to this channel, and you've been listening to me speaking. And you say, you know what, I want to know this Jesus. I want to know God. Well, friend, here's the good news. God loves you. No matter what you've done, He died for you. He gave His life for you. And then He rose from the dead. And today He's alive. And the Word says, if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So I want to lead you in that prayer right now. And I'm going to ask you to say this out loud with me. Right there while you're watching, just say this out loud that at least you can hear it. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, Thank you for dying for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. And today you are alive. I believe that. Now I call you Lord. You're my Savior. And right now I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, 
Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again. You're a child of God now. I've got something I'd like to send you to help you with your new walk with Jesus. This is a CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. This card is how to study through your Bible in a year. And then this one is going to explain to you what's just happened and some guidelines now that you're a Christian. That's our free gift to you. I want to send that to you free of charge. I'll even pay the postage. You just call us on that phone number or write to me at this address. And as soon as we got your details, we will send this off to you and you'll have it in a few days' time. Well, that's all we have time for today. We look forward to being together with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember now, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Join us in the Helderberg area at Section 3 Gan Center on Saturday evenings, Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings. You can join us in the Cape Town City Center on the corner of Durham Avenue and Victoria Street on Sunday mornings and evenings. You can also join the Bay Christian Family Church in Claymont on Sunday mornings and evenings, as well as in Paul in Bergefield Boulevard on Sunday mornings and evenings. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website or contact us at any of our details. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details. Hey,